I guess the first of my, uh, my three word slogans is, is obviously net the need to protect natural capital. Uh, we see it as being the sort of the, the fundamental building block of what we call a one planet perspective. And we think that in this, uh, in this diagram, we have the means of ensuring that uh, biodiversity is protected, that natural capital is protected, and that we get food, water, and energy security as a result of that. And basically, there are three basic steps. The first is to protect the natural capital, and then based on that, we can have a transition to um, a wiser or better production, and then wiser and better consumption. And those are enabled by these two enabling conditions around uh, finance and governance. One key thing that comes out of the Living Planet Report is maybe the need to rethink the way in which we have the traditional Venn diagram of society, economy, and uh, ecology. And basically, in this um, edition of the Living Planet Report, we, we have this saying that ecosystems sustain societies that create economies. There can be no other way around. So fundamentally, we must look at the, the natural capital, nature itself as being the fundamental building block upon which we have our societies and our economies developing. We all talk about the need to ensure food, water and energy security for a growing population. Uh, 7.2 billion odd now, rising to maybe 10.5 billion by the end of the century. Uh, obviously with that growing uh, wealth, growing middle classes and growing consumption. So how do we ensure we have food, water and energy security? We only will achieve that by ensuring that the, the land, the water, the seas, the natural capital itself that uh, this all depends upon is properly protected. We've already had plenty of um, words already mentioned about the ecosystem services that are derived from nature upon which we have that food, water and energy security and the valuation of a lot of those, of those elements. My second three word slogan is that protected areas do work and we had some uh, research in this year's Living Planet Report provided by uh, Zoological Society of London, our key partner with the Living Planet Report in which we demonstrated that uh, although there is still a decline in the, the species populations within protected areas, that this uh, rate of decline is far better than what we're seeing in the broader, broader landscape. I think it's really important that um, some of the points made earlier, certainly by Headley, is that you know, protected areas are just one part of the natural landscape and uh, sure they need concentrated protection, uh, but also nature right across the board uh, needs protection. And I think this is my last slogan for the, for the day, and that is the need to measure what matters. And I think so often, certainly with, uh, um, with protected areas um, and the World Parts Congress and the Aichi targets, it's very much about area, but really it's a lot about management and quality and the services that are being provided. And how we then um, measure the elements that are going to resonate with decision makers is critical. And I think whether you're using um, very basic uh, measures and there are some examples in the Living Planet Report of different kinds of case studies and it might just be something like um, mountain gorilla um, ecotourism and conservation in Rwanda and Uganda and DRC where you can see a direct benefit from tourists coming in and spending money and some of that money going to communities for schools or hospitals or whatever. Or another case study in the Living Planet Report is the, uh, the Great Barrier Reef here which has something like a five billion dollar value per year to the Australian economy, and yet even with that kind of valuation, you'll still have poor decision making and maybe poor valuation about the asset. One of the most important papers that I've read uh, in coming to this conference was actually only just released just before the conference. It was a, an article in uh, The Conversation, a journal by uh, Bob Pressey and Ewan Ritchie, in which they said very much this thing, let's measure what matters, because in some cases, um, talking about the economic value of an asset will resonate with decision makers, perhaps in um, ministries of uh, economics or finance. But in other cases, it will be the true intrinsic value of, the, of the, the nature itself. In other cases, it will be perhaps in the business sector, it will be the degree of risk associated with not valuing the asset properly. And we do a lot of work with, um, with companies using the water risk filter, where we look at uh, the, the risk to those companies of not looking after the water asset that they may be using as a core part of their business. But looking at Bob and Ewan's paper, I think the other thing that they raised was all of these things in terms of monetary values might still not do the job for us. And so there's maybe a need to look at other indicators such as um, human health, uh, human well-being. You know, what kind of values do we get from the Great Barrier Reef in terms of those assets? And can we uh, quantify that and translate that into sound decision making?